guys, it's Mike, Iron Trap Garage. So today we have a cool little video for you guys. Uh, I've been wanting to do this for a while, but we haven't really had anything to use in the video. Uh, so when Matt first moved into the shop, there was two lights in the whole place, two little tiny incandescent light fixtures. So obviously it's very well lit right now. Uh, what Matt actually has are some old light fixtures, probably around the 50s. It came out of a paper mill he went picking at years ago. Uh, he put them on a skid, kind of mothballed them until he had the shop that they would work perfect in. Now they were a T12 light fixture, which is very, very antiquated, it's very old, and they don't work very well in any type of cold weather. They stop working anywhere in between the 50 to 60 degree range. So in a garage, it's not the ideal setting, unless you have a very nice heated garage that stays in 60 plus. It doesn't work too well, you have a lot of problems in the winter. So I upgraded all the lights in his shop to LED and they work really, really well. Up until about three months ago, we didn't use any studio lighting, any type of backlighting whatsoever. It was literally just what's in the ceiling. And there's actually only uh, 12 lights total and it's like a 2,000 square foot shop. So there's not a whole lot of lighting. So what I wanted to show was how to upgrade a light from say the 50s or even maybe newer to LED. Now what this does is it takes an old fixture that you may not be able to get parts for, the ballast might be bad, the starters might be bad, the bulbs may be bad, and you can take that light fixture, rehash it, and turn it into a very bright and very well working light. So today we have two lights and a clock uh, that we're going to upgrade. So this is Matt's Quaker State clock. It hangs right here on the wall. It's been here for years since he moved in. Uh, it was working at one point and then it started to just flicker all the time and now it doesn't work at all. So we're going to take this, convert it to LED, and this is my bar light. Uh, it's a Miller Beer bar light. It does work right now, but it also hangs in my garage, which doesn't have any heat whatsoever. So in the winter time, it flickers and carries on and it's a pain in the butt. So what we're going to do is convert both of these to LED. They'll use less power and they'll basically run all the time, no problem. Matt's lights, I've had zero issues with since we've put them in and they're obviously super bright. So we're gonna break both of these down, show you how to do the conversion, and then that way you guys can buy you know, old lights to make your shop look more period correct, buy bar lights that don't work for your man cave. I mean, it's a really, really useful knowledge to have and actually it's extremely simple. Uh, you guys won't believe it. So. But we're going to set up, we'll get these taken apart, and we'll show you how to convert everything to LED. Alright, so we have our light opened up here. As you can see, it's extremely basic. There is a ballast, which is basically a transformer, and a starter. And then you have your bulb. So what we're going to do is basically remove the bulb, and we're going to direct wire what are called tombstones, which are what hold the light in place. Uh, depending on the LED bulb that you buy, you're either going to leave the ballast in place or direct wire it. I prefer the direct wire because it eliminates all of the old electronic devices, the ballast and the starter. It gets rid of all that so you don't have any issues. Now, what we're gonna do basically, this has uh, a set of leads on each side of the tombstone. We only need one because of how the LED works. So we're gonna cap two of them off, use two of them, and we're basically good to go. So we're going to take these wire nuts off right here. I may use these, reuse these wire nuts. I also brought solder connections with me, which may look a little nicer. So actually, we're gonna keep this one connected because this actually goes right to the neutral wire. So we leave that in place, and we are going to take, that goes to the starter. We're going to cut this one right here and to strip that back and we're going to put it under the wire nut over and around right to here and I'm going to take this starter out just for now so that they're not connected. So basically we Bypass it, bypass the starter, bypass the uh, ballast, direct wired it right to the wire coming in. We're going to take the bulb out, recycle these properly. 
and you're going to put your new bulb in, pop it into place, and then we're ready to test it. So I'm going to clean some things up, tape up these connections, and uh, test it, and then move on to Matt's clock, and we'll show you guys how that works. Alright, so I got things cleaned up a little bit. I just trimmed some of the wires, put a little tape on the end. Uh, all the wires we're not using, so nothing can arc or spark against. Now, one thing to remember, uh, whatever bulb you buy is super dependent on what's in your fixture. So you always need to check the ends uh, and check the length and bulb type. One thing I normally do is I take the original bulb that I have, and there's always usually a part number here on the end. This one is F20. T12 and I search that on the internet and then you get all the technical specifications look to see what uh, light then matches up in LED like I said I usually buy all of mine that are direct wire so I can eliminate all of the old stuff that I'm not really going to use anymore so I cleaned up all the connections and we're going to plug it in so I'll put the bulb back in these can be a little tricky so here we go Boom, that's like way brighter. Now, because this has a cover over the light, I got a, uh, a clear cover. If you're gonna put this in a fixture that doesn't have some sort of uh, diffusion cover, I would get something that's uh, milky. I can take a drop in a photo of Matt's lights. They have a milky lens because you get these little dots and it kind of doesn't burn your eyes, but it hurts your eyes, it's a little aggressive. So we're gonna take this Miller, Fusion cover. Looks good as new. Uh, it's a little bit brighter than it was before. Uh, not like super aggressively bright. I only got a 4K bulb, I believe. So it wasn't extremely bright and obnoxious. It just looks natural. It's LED, it doesn't draw as much power. And it looks perfect. And it took me like two minutes to do. Super easy. So now we're gonna move on to Matt's clock. This one's a little bit different. It has a round bulb, a perfect circle. It's a whole circle bulb. So we're gonna pull that apart, do that one, and then we're done. It's, this is a super easy conversion that basically anyone can really do if you have a couple minutes. So Matt's clock is a little bit different, obviously. As you can see, it has a round bulb. So we don't know what actually went bad with Matt's whole setup. We're not sure if it's the ballast or the bulb or the starter. So we're just going to remove all of it. The clock mechanism doesn't work anymore either. We're not really sure what's wrong with that. We may actually take the clock out at some point and retrofit a battery powered clock into it so that actually works. Uh, we're not really sure what happened. So for now we're at least just gonna get the light working. That way it looks good on the wall. So there is a switch here that turned the light on and off which we're gonna remove because that goes to the ballast. Uh, we're going to leave the switch in place. We're just going to unwire it. And then we are going to unwire all of this mess that's for the bulb and the clock. I'm going to leave the clock in place for now and the wires. And we'll figure out what we want to do a little further down the line. up like I said I kept the clock in place I did just tie the wires together till we figure out what exactly we want to do uh, but this thing is done uh, the ballast is still here the starter is still here the wires are trimmed short they'll never get in the way so I'm just gonna leave them 
Uh, let's fire it up and see what it looks like. Now, this thing is aggressively bright. Uh, you can definitely see it on camera. There was not very many options for this bulb, obviously, because it's kind of an oddball. The only LED I could really find that was a reasonable price was a 6K. Now, this is going in a really, really heavy plastic, which, let me unplug this, because you can't even see what I'm pointing at. Really heavy plastic, yellowed light. Uh, so, I figured it, it may not be too aggressive. We'll see. It may be extremely aggressive. So, I'm going to put this all back together, and then let's fire it up and see what it looks like with the plastic on it. Hopefully, it's not too obnoxious. All right, let's see how excessively bright this is. Perfect. Awesome. That's exactly what I wanted. It's not over the top bright, but it's bright enough that it'll catch your eye from across the shop. All right, so I think they look pretty awesome. What do you guys think? I mean, it took me, I think, 15 minutes to convert both of these to LED, and the time invested is well worth it. Uh, now, with these two lights, the bulbs are a little bit expensive because the Quaker State is kind of an oddball thing with that round LED light. That's not like a super common thing. And the Miller Beer is a two-foot light, not super common as well. Four-foot lights, like are in Matt's shop in the overhead, I think they were like, when I did them, they were like 4 or $5 a piece, which is like really, really cheap, like extremely cheap. Now, $20 a bulb is a little expensive, but it was one bulb each, so it's not like I had to buy 20 bulbs to redo them. So, hopefully you guys found this useful and you can use the information for yourself. Maybe you got a couple old lights in your shop that you like to rehash, or when you're out picking flea markets that are at estates, you see an old advertising sign and light that's really cheap, don't really know if you want to buy it, snatch it up, convert it to LED, hang it on your wall, and it'll look awesome. So, we really hope you guys like this video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. I will do my best to answer them as well as I can. No promises. Uh, we hope you guys like this style of video. We hope to be doing more of it this winter. We're going to try and tackle some tool restorations and that kind of stuff. And let us know if you'd like to see that. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, we do videos every Sunday, Tuesday, and Friday. Can't really guarantee what video is going to come out when because we got so much stuff going on and so many different videos, uh, we kind of just put them out as we get them done. The tea basically is always on Tuesdays, but Fridays and Sundays are kind of, it's a gamble, you never know what you're gonna get. So thanks guys for watching, we really appreciate it. We'll see you later.